very special show today, which takes place right here in the great state of Kentucky. I have an amazing guest, Jonathan Drew, the man, the myth, the legend from Jewish State Cigars. JD, thanks a lot for being with us today. We appreciate it. So why don't you tell us why are we in Kentucky of all places? Well, first of all, I'm really glad you guys are here in Kentucky with us. We're, we're, this is pretty big celebration for us. Uh, you know, last year we released a product called the Kentucky Fire Cured Cigars. And it's really a whole new uh, concept in premium cigar blending. So th this function that we're doing today from 4 to 7 here in Hopkinsville is about basically the na nationwide, worldwide, real release of the brand. Can you describe to us exactly what a, what a fire-cured cigar, you know, a fire-cured kind of tobacco really, like really is, like a difference between other kinds? Sure, absolutely. I mean, when you think of the, the, the overall parameters of tobacco, you think of dark air-cured tobacco. So when you walk into a regular cigar shop and you walk into the humidor, it's all 100% dark air-cured tobacco, okay? Other than that, you'll see what's called, in types of tobacco forms, um, uh, dark fire-cured, Early, Oriental, and Virginia. So when you think of that that palette of all of those different types of tobacco, you know, dark air cured is what everybody's used to smoking in the premium sector. Drew Estate has been working with all of those since 1999, but we've never marketed as such. So we've been using tobaccos that have been being used for hundreds of years, actually thousands of years, but we never said, hey, you know, actually focusing on it in our marketing and the way we talk about the products. So when we talk about diverse tobacco blending, where a lot of people will, will, other manufacturers will use different tobaccos from different places, it's typically, you know, Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominican Republic. Brazil, Mexico, maybe Peru, and of course, all of those are, again, dark air-cured tobaccos. So getting back into the dark fire-cured, or Virginia, or Burley, or Orientals, those are stuff that we've been using for a lot of years, long time, I'm talking well over a decade, but we've just never put it into our marketing and explaining to people exactly where each of the leaves come from and what we do with it. So now with the Kentucky Fire Cured Cigar brand, what we've done is we've said, all right, let's, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper and let's hone in on this fire cured tobacco and this fire cured taste. So the first thing I want you to think about in terms of what the difference would be to a smoker, to a cigar enthusiast, what would be the difference between a dark air cured cigar and a fire cured? Think of it like this, you ready? Let's imagine you're going to go and cook a steak in your backyard. Mm. Are you going to go and grill it on the regular grill, or are you going to smoke it? Okay? You know the taste difference when you, when you cook? All right, so when you're smoking something, there's a whole different taste profile. All right? And again, back to the tobacco side, you're not, when you're doing fire curing like that barn, we see all that smoke shooting out of the barn right there. When you're doing fire curing, you're not using heat. That's not the goal, that's flu curing, and that's something that's used in other process. So when you're doing fire curing, you're using smoke to work the tobacco, not heat. And you're burning dark woods, heavy, um, what they're called is, uh, is called hardwoods. So it's oak, it's um, hickory, it's maple, and other things as well. It doesn't have to be limited to just yes. those three woods. And farmers make decisions to change and switch up based on what's more available at the time. Now, will you get different flavors from the different woods? Uh, yeah, you get some different flavors from the different woods, but overall, it's not just the wood that's really impacting the, the, the tobacco taste. It's also the, the sawdust and the wood chips that are used, okay. and that also has an effect to the taste. But the difference is going to, is going to be there, but it's going to be probably not that recognizable in terms of the specific wood style. You know what I'm saying? We can get into a whole bunch of marketing bullshit and start saying, well, I used oak instead of hickory, and that's going to give the taste difference. Yeah. And I really don't foresee as that being a major part of the equation. So again, back to you're going to smoke it in your smoker in your backyard and make your steak, or are you going to grill it? You know the difference in taste. Same thing. Let's talk about scotch. Uh, All right? That's my you like scotch? Yes, sir. All right. So, you know, scotch is a type of whiskey. Mm. When, you, when, when, when they distill scotch in Scotland... In the island of Islay, they do it that's a very peaty style. And you know how they do that? It's a very similar process to fire curing. What they do is they take the grain, which is going to be always barley, and then they take the barley and they smoke the barley with peat. Not peat moss, it's like a peat coal. So they're taking peat coal instead of a, a hardwood, and they're smoking the grain. When you smoke the grain, and then the, the product gets distilled, it goes from a... a, a uh, it goes from a solid to a gas to a liquid and maybe a couple of different times. What are you left with? That peaty, smoky taste, right? Yes, sir. 
Is there really anything different conceptually between the peaty, smoky taste of a scotch and the peaty, smoky taste of your steak or the peaty, smoky taste of your Kentucky Fire Cured by Drew Estate? Yeah.